We have questions about the Obama administration's plans for health care reform. One of them, and it's a big one, will the government use taxpayer money for abortions? Our next guest, Charmaine Yost, is the president of Americans United for Life. She just met with the White House on this issue last week and comes to share uh, whatever she found out. Dr. Yost, thank you so much for coming in today. It's great to be with you, Shannon. Tell me about your concerns in the current health care legislation and how the White House responded to your concerns. You know, we asked to meet with them because the president did give the speech in front of Congress where he said that he was committed to seeing that there was no federal funding for abortion in the health care reform bill. But Shannon, that really doesn't square with the reality of what we're seeing on the Hill. So we wanted to just open up a dialogue with them and say, look, we're confused. What exactly is the reality here and what is the president's position? They came back and just reiterated the fact that that was his position. But um, as we're looking at this going forward, we're very concerned because we're seeing both the funding issues in the bills that are currently under consideration. There is abortion in there, but there's also an abortion mandate coming down the pike that is going to be imposed by the courts um, as this goes forward. And I know his exact quote, one more misunderstanding I want to clear up. Under our plan, no federal dollars will be used to fund abortions. I know a number of congressmen mm -hmm. and women that I've talked to have said if we don't specifically exclude it through some of these amendments and other procedures in the legislation, then it's in. Is that's that exactly? Correct? That is precisely correct. And you know, one of the things that's interesting in terms of the political dynamics here is we're seeing a real left-right uh, consensus and a bipartisan effort to deal with this on Capitol Hill. We've got Congressman Stupak and Congressman Pitts coming together for the Stupak Pitts Amendment that basically parallels the Hyde Amendment that, from the Medicaid that has explicit language that says you may not fund uh, abortion through health care reform. And yet, repeatedly, we've seen um, that amendment and other ones just like it voted down. So that's the kind of reality we're seeing on the ground, Shannon, that doesn't square with the rhetoric of the abortion forces that are saying this isn't a problem. And of course, the Hyde Amendment passed in 1976, mm -hmm. kind of in response to Roe v. Right. Wade, to make sure that federal dollars can't be used for abortions. And yet, the president and many of his supporters will say, when you talk about abortion being in the mix, right. you're using scare tactics. Well, it's interesting because Americans United for Life, we're the ones who defended the Hyde Amendment in front of the Supreme Court. And so um, we established then that it was constitutional not to fund abortion through Medicaid. But see, the Hyde Amendment does not apply to health care reform because it's an entirely new, different funding stream. Unless you have something like the Hyde Amendment that says very clearly, without any ambiguity whatsoever, that abortion won't be funded, the courts come in and they say, under mandatory categories of care that you have to fund it. And that's really, you know, a lot of times we've talked so much about funding, we haven't talked about the role of the courts and where they'll come in and whatever, wherever there's ambiguity, the courts like to come in and make it really clear there will be uh, forced funding, the tax, seeing the taxpayers come on and have to subsidize abortion through health care reform unless we deal with it explicitly. They will be referring to the Stupak Amendment along with the Hyde Amendment. Dr. Charmaine, yes, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Shannon. Really appreciate it. Well, companies across the country are looking for ways to rein in